Welcome to Unbiased and On the Fence. I'm Shane. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We are back with Von Gulp. Hey, how's it going, Von? Hey, thanks for having me back again. So yeah. happy to be here. Yeah, this is awesome. So today we're going to dive deeper into what the heck is going on with the Earth's Schumann frequency. Um, we, uh, we're bringing back, of course, Buddhist author Von Gulp, who has been studying the ascension of Earth for the last 40 years through her Buddhist background, metaphysic, academic research, and QHHT research, which we all love, Dolores Cannon here. She discusses how Earth is also shifting into another reality and how more Mandela effects and faster manifestations will occur for those working on their awakening and ascension with Earth. She also gives us insight on how the awakening ceremonies done by many indigenous tribes in Buddhist monasteries in 2011 and 2012 contribute to humanity's transformation into oneness and how this return of Maitreya Buddhahood or Christ consciousness ushers us into the golden age of galactic humanity for the next thousand years. And it does sound like a fun ride indeed. <laughs> so I'm going to explain every one of those sentences because they touch on big topics each sentence touches on a big topic. So for your viewers that are have not, uh, that I'm new to, let me just give them a quick background. Um, so I, um, I, I'm Laotian. I was raised in the spiritual tradition of Buddhism for the last 40 years, even though I don't look like it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> last 40 years, when you're higher frequency, you don't, you don't age as quickly. So, so you're not counting a previous life then, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so um, for the last 40 years, I've been studying, um, you know, Tibetan and Mahayana Buddhism. And for a very long time, I would just use the principles for my own inner wellness to manifest with, with you know, consciousness and the studies in that spiritual tradition. And about 20 years ago, um, many Buddhist monks um, that I was following, um, such as the Dalai Lama and many other prominent ones, started the initiative to work with academia to get information out about mindfulness, meditation, consciousness, to kind of help um, get more information to see if how much of this is true and um, and just kind of prove metaphysics is not fringe science or pseudoscience, but it is really our every day and it does change your reality. And so, and so early on in that research, um, it was kind of new, but now there's so much research that it's, it's kind of like suffocated everybody <laughs> with all this research, and it is coming into the fold. However, um, in the, the last 20 years of following the, the academic research in med meditation and metaphysics, one of the aspects um, that I looked into was a lot of different energy healing modalities. So I'm very familiar with energy healing, like Reiki from the Buddhist um monk from Japan who started Reiki, Sh Qigong in China. I'm very familiar with a couple other energy healing modalities of the East. But um, there were many Western doctors that were tapping into the gamma ray frequency of energy healing and creating their own modalities. And I tried a couple of them as well. But I ended up settling with um, Dolores Cannon for one primary reason. Um, and I got certified about five years ago and have been doing it ever since. And the thing that I liked about Dolores Cannon's QHHT modality was that it allowed me the opportunity to have a direct conversation with the Overso about my research in terms of the ascension of earth and humanity and the clients and what their um, abundance blocks and you know issues with the wheel of Dharma in their incarnation was what's holding them back from raising their frequency. Um, and so that's a little bit about my background. I, um, 
wrote, oh, I think between 2011 to 2012. I had a lot of sleepless nights, like four hours a night of sleep because I was, um, I started to take all that research and started to use it to write blog articles that I tested on my Facebook at the time, uh, which are, if you if you look up 2011 to 2012 on my Facebook timeline, um, it's all public, so you can still see that. And it, it had lots and lots of um, hundreds and thousands of shares. And I was just testing to see if this information was interesting to put into a book. And it proved to be pretty interesting. Um, the thing that I did not... Um, factor in was I did not expect other people to have awakenings. I just thought it was just me and just to play to play play with it. Oh, just right, I forgot about that. Oh. I just you know I would just wipe it away. Um, and then I started seeing more people have awakenings. Um, and started to be a resource for them. I actually, at the time when more people started having awakenings about a decade ago, um, I reached out to a physicist um, who started, she wrote her first book, uh, Cynthia Sue Larson. Oh yeah, definitely. We yeah, love so she, Cynthia. <laughs> yeah, so she started her first book and I reached out, I looked around to see who was talking about this stuff um, in Western and I reached out to her and, and asked her, why is everybody else, it was just me, why is everybody else having this? Uh, and it's even happening even more. And so she enlightened me about kind of mass awakening. I was like, oh, I had no clue that my um, my my spiritual tradition, that stuff was actually going to come into play. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, um, you know, as a child, you know, when you say, oh, yeah, you know, if you, um, you create your reality and your thoughts and your actions and your consciousness create your reality and you're going to go into a parallel reality that's going to be in line with your frequency and your angels and your guides are going to work with you through synchronicity. That was just nonsense talk to a lot of people. Right. So when things just kind of happen, I would just kind of, you know, just put it away. But now people are having mass awakenings. So it's a, it, like my 40 years of studying the ascension of Earth um, became relevant. Um, but one of the reasons why I am doing interviews like this is because, um, you know, after, 20, after 2012, I uh, moved on. I had got married. I had two children. I moved back onto my life. Other people were doing wonderful work like yourself and others. And then my sessions, I started getting archangels come through my QHHT sessions asking wow. me to come back into this work. And I argue with them. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I argue with them um, <laughs> because the last time, <laughs> two years or four hours of sleep every night was not making me a very happy person. So <laughs> Right. I agree. I will. I will do my bit to provide the information, um, you know, as much as I can. But it is a balancing act with you know being, me being a working mom in IT, and also I have um, books that are sitting there waiting to be finished. Right. So, so that's why I'm here to you know <laughs> provide information about the shift. And it's amazing because it's it's really been talked about in in various ways in various religions and cultures and everything, and it's really cool. This is a very exciting time to be alive to see how, to to see all of this coming together, just like everyone talked about, you know. Yeah. So I mean, you know, um, between between twenty ten to twenty twelve, up until to twenty twelve, there was a lot of indigenous tribes around the world that were doing awakening ceremonies. Mm -hmm. um, with frequencies and harmonics and um, like the Native American Council of Elders, the chief of the Polynesian Islands, the chiefs of the Easter Island, um, the um, Mayan tribe of elders. Um, there were still indigenous tribes that kept this knowledge about the end of the cycle of polarity and the beginning of the cycle of unity consciousness or oneness or Christ consciousness in the West is what they would uh, recognize it as. And um, the last one were um, Buddhist, Buddhism and um, like the 14 Dalai Lama and many Buddhist monasteries worldwide in 2011 did awakening ceremonies and they would, you know, have these huge bells that almost look like it's from Star Trek. It's the size of like uh, a floor height building and they would mm. ring it and it's like the biggest tuning fork. So all of these indigenous tribes that kept this knowledge and have not 
it has been wiped out through colonization, at the same time started doing these awakening ceremonies to send out that frequency and usher in um, the new golden age of a galactic humanity for the next thousand years. That's how the, the folklores go with all these different indigenous tribes. Do they um, do that at the same time, the bells? Because that could definitely affect the human resonance. I mean, that's, you know what I mean? Just if it's all around the globe and they ring it at the same time, that's adding to that resonance of the earth, you know? Yep, yep. So, um, yeah, so all of them did the um, awakening ceremonies right around the same time or in sync or, you know, I'm not really sure the exact dates, but right around right. the same, you know, 2011 to 2012. Um, some did a little bit earlier. But um, basically, they did all of that and then they um they waited they waited for earth they, they did the part they waited for earth mm -hmm. to see what happens and um we know this in science when you follow the schumann residents and so people who are not familiar with schumann residents just to give a brief background um um, the Institute of Noetic Sciences that was founded by um, Apollo 14 astronaut Dr. Edgar Mitchell, who started that, um, and his initiative was to work with scientists and academia to bring metaphysics into the fold. Um, so, it, it, and that institute still does that. They helped sponsor the HeartMath Institute that measures the frequency and energy of the human um, heart, which they found is a 5,000 times more powerful than your brain. So mm -hmm. you can feel it when somebody is like of high frequency and they are emitting a certain um, energy from their heart. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so those institutions sponsored the build at Princeton University of the what they call the Global Consciousness Project. And what they did was they put these, like at the time, when they first started in 1998 was when I first started following it. And they didn't have much data because a lot of things didn't happen for a long time. Um, what the uh, the random number generators that they set yeah. up all over, right? Yeah. yeah, so they put like seventy, and they have a, a, a little bit more, but they will put these random number generators in different parts of the Earth. Oh, did we lose you? I think we might have lost you, Vaughn. You're frozen. We'll give her a second to come back. I will pick up where she left off because this is actually pretty interesting because the work done with the global uh, initiative, global, I'm going to mess up the name of it because, oh, there you are. Are you back? Yeah. Okay. I see so There we go. You are just a little bit glitchy, but I think you're, you're back now maybe. Okay. In the, uh, in the suburbs of Washington, so the wind... Wait one second, because you're 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 breaking up on me. Let's see okay. if I can get you back here. I can see. You. Really? Am I frozen for you? No. You're just you're just in and out. Um, let me see if it gets better here in a second. But yeah, I think this is a really important topic that you're talking about. I don't want anybody to miss this because I think it was so cool when uh, I think 9/11 was the first event I saw that had happened with these global these random number generators all over the earth and they could see it changing like, I don't know, 12 hours before it happened or, or you know, it was the night before in the middle of the night, these random number generators, which are, are just basically an electronic coin flip, basically. So they should get something that's close to 50% all of the time, but then it starts to kind of veer off of that 50% point and they know some kind of anomalies happening for yeah. the global consciousness to be affecting it in that way. Right. And, and then a big event will usually follow at the peak of it. I think the peak of these anomalies with the random number generators was like right around the time the tower collapsed or something along those lines. Yeah. So um, so just to, j just to go back to what I was saying. So, yes, exactly. So there was like 70 or more random number generators. And they kind of... They kind of measure the magnetics of the earth, kind of like a like they measure earthquakes and seismology. Mm -hmm. It's a technology. But basically what happens is the earth's heartbeat, her frequency is 7.83 hertz. Okay. And it's been like that for a very long time, for millions of years. So when they started this project of monitoring um, the heartbeat of earth to see is 
are we linked to the earth? Does she has a does she have a consciousness? Um, you know, you know, do we impact her? Does she impact us? And so they want to try out the science science project. And um, what basically end up happening is whenever um, the number generators start organizing, what is picking up is the heart frequency of people in that area that's mm -hmm. close to that located our uh, random number generator. So you have people in India, in um, in the states, in different parts of the world. And when it organizes, what it's saying is um, something is going to happen because all these people, like animals who can tell when an earthquake is going to happen before mm -hmm. it happens, all these people are having um, heart anxiety or whatever, and so something's going to happen. And it usually does. So mm -hmm. and it has to be a very, very impactful event. So like um, in... In uh, like India, it will forecast um, earthquakes or major disasters is going to happen. Um, in um, it, it predicted Katrina before it happened. It predicted 9/11. Just really impactful events. And at 9/11, um, it, it's funny because I actually had dreams about 9/11 two days before it happened, uh, and a lot of people did show that these RNG generators were picking up people's anxiety mm -hmm. before it ever happened. So what does that mean? So let me explain how what this means. So when you go and you look at the graph of um, the Global Consciousness Project for how they measure different events, um, basically there's a blue line. And when it hits that blue line is when she's spiking. If it doesn't hit that blue line, um, it's, she's not interested in the, su the subject. It hasn't really, it hasn't mm -hmm. really kind of gotten her out of bed, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's not interesting. So that's how you drink it. So, um, but basically, when she was 7.83 hertz for a very long time, at 9.11, she spiked. In 2014, she spiked to um, 15 hertz to 30 hertz, which was big. When, you, when you're when you 7.83 hertz for millions of years and all of a sudden something's happening, it you know, a lot of these scientists get excited. <laughs> so they're like, right. oh, yeah, data. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, and so some, some awakenings start happening from some people. Um, and then in 2017, it, it hit again, um, was 36 hertz at the Women's March and um, other events happening in the West because the West is very focused on changes for themselves. And so more people in 2017 had awakenings. In 2020, which is where we're at right now, this month it has hit up to 50 hertz. So what does this mean when I'm talking about hertz? <clears throat> the way you can understand this is if, like let's take a TV, okay? An old TV is gonna have 24 hertz or 24 frames per second. And you can see the picture quality is kind of slow. And when it changes picture, you can see that it's changing. So it's kind of a low frequency TV. But when you upgrade to a TV that's newer, that has maybe 60 hertz to 120 hertz, it's 60 frames to 120 frames per second. So the picture quality is much higher, much more pixelated. Things change from frame to frame so much faster so that you can't really catch the nuances of things changing. So Very smooth, yeah. It's a smooth picture. And so when the earth has her, um, her, her leaps from you know, the different levels of hertzes that she goes on, what basically happens is the picture is changing so fast that you can't catch these changes in real time like you used to. Mm -hmm. Like I used to be able to, years ago, see like a billboard go whoop, whoop, and then some of my friends, and then we would do like, oh, you know, we would, we would have a great time over that. But now, now you can't really see that as much because the picture is changing so fast. And so how you know that you're having, you're changing to another reality is you have what these call Mandela effects where now you see, now you don't. <laughs> right. Something new that you never saw before because you see the picture slowly change because the picture quality has gotten better. And for people who are of higher frequency, who are working on their awakening and who are working on ascending their levels of consciousness, they are matching or trying to match her frequency. And as they match her frequency, because she's shifting to a whole new reality, uh, into um, a 5D reality, 
um, they are going to go with her. And the people who aren't raising their level of consciousness and working on their ascension work um, by having their personal awakening that they are the user that's manifesting, attracting to them, the, you know, what they are, um, you know, the reality is just reflecting back to you or to you what you are so you're the user that changes everything so anyways so if you're ha if you're doing that work you're going to catch up with her um if you're not doing that work then you're you're going to stay in a lower vibration and you're going to stay in a reality that's a lower vibration and it's not going to be accelerating as much um and that golden age um that unity consciousness exists in a 5d level of consciousness and that's where the earth is going and she's very very patient she gave everybody a second chance because mm -hmm. um, there was people who were so so close so things are very polarizing right now to kind of force you to decide which frequency you want to be in do you want to be integrous and courageous and you know you know align with those things in your life or do you not because you you kind of have to start walking your talk I'm so glad you said that because I come across a lot of people, you know, with the Mandela Effect community that I'm, that I'm involved with that uh, they're just like, I just want to go back to my old reality. And I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> you really don't. You want to you want to move with the shift. I mean, things are shifting. I think it's a positive thing. And I mean, if, as soon as you can sort of let go of the old, I mean, so many of us are carrying this baggage around that we've just, you know, sort of had heaped on us by either our parents or a teacher or a, a religious leader or something. And I think it's time for us to just let that stuff go and, and just, you know, because it's just holding us back at this point, you know. And so many people want to go back to the old reality. And I'm like, look forward, you know. And, I, and the, even there's a scripture, Jesus, that said something like, you know, whoever puts their hands to the plow and looks back isn't fit for the kingdom or something. That sounds kind of harsh. But I mean, uh, it's and it's okay if you want to go back to that reality, if you want to stay in the low, lower vibe, that's totally cool too. It's not like you're going to be damned and punished for eternity in hell or anything. <laughs> it's just like, you know, you'll sit in this grate for a while longer and then move on in the future when you are ready, right? Is yeah. that kind of how you see it too? Yeah, and that's that's how that's how it is in Buddhism because mm -hmm. you know the different levels, um, you know it's like it's like kindergarten is no better than middle school is no better than high school is no better than college. Okay, they each have their own hum and they each have sweetness in, in every single level. Okay, um, so you're going to get exactly what is um, the experience that you're supposed to get. And for some people, they're ready to graduate to the next level and have better, higher experiences. And for others. Living in that level of frequency is just too much for them, and so they just want to go back to what they know, which is fine. Maybe another lifetime they'll get to the point where they can um, get to a, a level of consciousness in which um, this is comfortable for them. Mm -hmm. It's like if you take somebody and you put them many levels up into another classroom that they're not ready for, they're going to fail and they're going to have a miserable time. Mm -hmm. So, um, and so there's n nothing is better. Or Just like high school. If you're a middle schooler and they stick you in high school or college, you're going to be like, what the heck? This is horrible, right? <laughs> yeah, you're just not ready for that. So, um, so that's what, that's what's going on with the shoe in frequency. And so she is shifting to a different reality. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with third dimension. There's nothing wrong with fourth dimension. Everybody's going to get their set. And we, we really just need to get over our fear of death. That's, really that's a huge one. They really, yeah. because um, especially in my regressions, um, you know, a lot of my, the people that I, that I get are very old souls that have came here to, um, you know, help with the ascension and awakening. And they're at the part in their level of consciousness that they're ready to kind of learn and grow with the ascension of earth and the universe. And um, when they, when they come in, they basically are just looking to, you know, what's my button spots? What are the things holding down my frequency that I need to um, find clarity, forgive, let go, and so I can lighten myself up? Because you have to be um, lighter, kind of light as a, as a feather. You have to not have any any baggage holding you back to the third dimension. So if you work on the abundance, block, abundance blocks and your unbalanced perspective on things, then those things are not going to weigh you down anymore and your energy will be what it was when it came into this experience. Mm -hmm. High radiating, loving, and um, just very abundant. But, um, and by doing that, you are you are changing your consciousness. And basically when, when um, when they did the indigenous um, awakening ceremonies, um, it was usher ending the cycle of polarity and ushering in a new energy 
um, the energy is of unity consciousness. So if you if you look at a lot of scientific evidence now, um, they've shown that we are all connected. The the global consciousness shows that we're all one. We're all connected. In um, in my regressions, you can go go into that, and the spirit world is connected to everybody else. We're all connected. So and there's so many different ways to to know that we're all connected, and we're all one anyways in this this whole experience. But um it you know what what people need to understand is, is they think that um okay we're gonna go to fifth dimension i'm gonna check out i'm gonna quit my job i don't need to do anything you know and it, <laughs> this is not armageddon okay <laughs> so, um and you know that that's 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 not how it is what is changing is your perspective on things are changing because the frequency is so high that you are the, the veil is lifting and you're able to see your connection to everything else and to everyone else and so your 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 way of being of being separate from one another and seeing separatism um no longer is something that you hold on to anymore because for some reason you just change your your viewpoint or more open-minded to things that like that. So when you change your energy, um, what happens is when you transition into the Christ consciousness, Maitreya Buddhahood, you know, all, all these different terms for oneness, when you change that, then you change your energy. And by changing your energy and your perspective on things, your actions start following that consciousness. And so when you're when you're doing things, you're much more inclusive of people. Um, when you're working on something at work, uh, because you know this affects everybody, everybody's connected, you put more integrity and workmanship into your work so that you put a good product and something good that is reflective of you that, that's going to enrich somebody's life. Um, you put your you put your heart into the food that you make so that um, they they get a good experience, not just put some pieces of um, bad food out there and <laughs> that's it. <laughs> you know, you like it, you don't like it, I don't care. You know, um, they're just more integrous. And yeah. um, these are the effects of people who are um, of higher frequency and see the oneness in everybody else. Isn't it amazing that when you do shift like that, it seems like your world begins to shift around you just from your own perspective shifting? I mean, it's it's really quite amazing. And then the people you seem to run into, you're like, you start to feel like maybe you showed up late to the party. You're like, wait, like all these people are awake and aware of all these things I'm figuring out now. And I don't know, it's just like you really do seem to magnetize or draw into yourself where you're at, you know? So I guess if, if you're really low vibe all the time, you're constantly sort of bringing that to yourself, you know, and, and when you begin to shift upwards, you'll notice that your vibration changes and you begin to draw in these higher vibe people as well. Yeah. It's amazing the way it works. Yeah. And, you know, and the thing is, is that, and they've, and they've, and they found this also, um, not just in Buddhism, but they, um, they found this also when they're studying um, the Schumann frequency, that when they start looking at whenever she does her spikes, and they look at history, what happens is um, it's almost like an amplifier. So like a magnet, you know, we're all energy and we're responding to each other. But the biggest magnet that affects us is the earth. And so when she changes her frequency, it really affects us in a lot of different ways. And, um, you know, actually, um, Dr. Hawkins, um, a, the, the, a top mental health uh, doctor who spent his life mapping out the levels of consciousness of different people and things have found in his work that there's an offshoot of humanity that is going to be happening and he calls it homo spiritus <laughs> so <Wow. laughs> homo spiritus and we are getting an upgrade in our nervous system and um because for most people in the um the 3d physical body that we have it can't hold these high levels of energy you know when you get to five six seven hundred eight hundred it can't hold these high levels of energy so in order to have a 3d experience um you know we are getting upgrade and the way you upgrade somebody is to change their frequency so a harmonic tuning for a little by little changes everybody's frequency and their nervous system starts changing as well Mm. And they've done this with um, with um, sound 
science where they would play certain frequencies to animals and they would actually change their cosmology wow. playing that frequency so um, they will get an egg of a chicken and then play the heartbeat of a duck and a duck will be born <laughs> <laughs> okay i've heard about that also shooting the laser through one type of embryo and and the light carries the dna over and then it changes it and i've heard of and these sorts of anything things. physical all they did was send the energy of another genetic code in right. the embryo, it changed the embryo. That's amazing. So when Earth changes her frequency and she does these leaps to higher and higher frequencies, um, it's going to change our bodies and it's going to change our nervous system so that we can be, um, we can be more present, but be homo spiritus like Dr. Hawkins says. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, you know, but it's going to take some adjusting. And like you said earlier, once you are awakened, um, you kind of can't go back. Right. <laughs> because you, you feel like you're cheating yourself. But let me, you know, the thing that people um, people ask all the time is, what's this whole point? Well, then why are we doing this? Why, you know, the thing is, is that um, Everyone who who is coming here is they're at a point in the level of consciousness to have the personal awakening, and kind of understand um, the rule book of the game. And the rule book is that you're the one that's creating it and attracting to yourself. And so, um, like I said, when Earth increases the frequency, she's an amplifier. She's like this huge tuning fork, so it brings up everything. So if you're if you're higher frequency and, and you're then you're gonna be more creative, you're gonna be more positive, more positive things are gonna happen to you. You're gonna have an easy time whenever she does her, her leaps. Um, if you are um, negative, you're gonna bring more negativity to you, you're gonna attract more accidents, more illnesses because you're amplifying whatever energy you are. And when they mapped history against the spikes in the Schumann resonance, they found that um, humanity had a lot of renaissances during yeah. the time. At the same time, it had a lot of conflict and war. So the people who are high frequency are, are attracting to self more of that high frequency and the people who are low are attracting more low. But um, the thing is, is that what's different that they found with this project that is that it's never gone to these highs before. You know, uh, 7.83 to 50 hertz is a really big jump. And she keeps on jumping bigger and bigger leaps. And so because she's never done it before in history, they're going, well, what's going on? And basically what's going on is what a lot of the indigenous tribes have been saying is that we're splitting into a parallel reality that is of higher frequency. And they've shown this in science, um, like, uh, they did the double split experiment mm -hmm. um, where they showed that, uh, and they did this thousands of times in quantum mechanics all over the world in different universities. And what they found is that two exact atoms can exist um, in two different places and still communicate with each other. Right. <laughs> so what does that mean? We're all atoms. That means we have multiple versions of ourselves in parallel realities and we can still communicate with each other. So you might all of a sudden have a change of thought and be like, you know what, I don't think that's a really good idea. Well, it's probably coming from your other self in another reality is telling you, hey, that was not a good idea. I did not like that experience. So, you know, that could be happening to people as well. Um, you know, the concept of multiverses, Dr. Steven Weinberg, you know, who won the Nobel Prize for proving and talking about multiverses, have shown that as well. But then also, um, you know, a team of military remote viewers from um, Dr. Um, I think Dr. Courtney Brown of the Farsight Institute. He spent much of his um, career, and I think he's still doing it. And for remote viewing. For remote viewing for the mm -hmm. military, the U.S. military. Um, so the U.S. military team of remote viewers that he was um, doing found that after 2013, there was two separate timelines. Mm. One of higher frequency and one of lower frequency. So, um, you know, I mean, even like the D wave, um, you know, it, it started off with um, D wave systems in Canada, but because they have sh shown it in, in, um, in, in beta, uh, a lot of companies like 
like NASA and Google and other companies are coming in trying to re replicate the D-Wave into a bigger scale for their own purpose because mm -hmm. they don't want to start experiments that are going to fail. And so what they want to do is they want to pump in a bunch of questions to the computer, search the internet for the answers. And because the internet is not 3D, it's just energy. <clears throat> They're getting the answers from the internet and they're getting answers to questions uh, or pro so, you know, proposals that they have for different ideas that they want to do um, that don't exist in our reality, that don't exist, um, people and ideas that don't exist in our reality. And so um, the D-Wave computer is just basically pulling this information from parallel realities that are pumping in their information through their internet. It's almost like the wave of probability of what could be. I mean, and when you think of it in those terms, it's like limitless Yeah. what, what information you could pull in. Yeah. I mean, an idea that somebody didn't do in this reality exists somewhere else, and that computer can go grab it and say, hey, they never did it in this reality. Do it here. Yeah, you know? do, it, do it here. Or mm -hmm. maybe you, you're thinking like like uh, Google is really invested in a D-Wave. NASA is really invest, invested in uh, trying to duplicate a D-Wave for themselves. Um, the first customer was the U.S. military, but there's all these tech firms that are going in trying to replicate it for their own, um, their own purposes so that they don't spend a lot of money um, on uh, futile projects. So anyways, um, that's been proven in technology that there's parallel realities. And you know what is funny? I was just watching Space Odyssey <laughs> and mm -hmm. in the old movie Space Odyssey and there's this black monolith, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. in all different timelines. And wouldn't it be funny if the black mono monolith in Space Odyssey was a D-Wave computer? <laughs> oh, yeah, really. <laughs> I've often thought about that at the Mecca Cube that they always walk yeah. around. I'm like, what if that was a big D-Wave computer? Yeah. What if that was a D-Wave computer? <laughs> I just thought that was really funny. But anyways, the point is, is that um, the debate, you know, of do we exist in multiple realities? Is there multiple dimensions? That's kind of over now because they've already proven it in science and technology that yeah. there are parallel realities and the parallel versions of us. And so um, the Earth is a consciousness as well, and she is ascending and raising her frequency as well. And when she makes these jumps, um, people who are catching up to her will, you know, go go um, with her to that parallel reality, and others who don't will. Stay in the reality that they're in and that's perfectly fine everybody's getting the lessons and the experience that's matching their level of consciousness and their frequency but um but yeah it's just all it comes down to is just just work on yourself and work on living the best version of yourself and work on your inner work um and just try to manifest the the best life that you can for yourself. That's really what all it comes down to. And by by people stop trying to copy other people and be somebody else that they're not, mm -hmm. by them being the best version of themselves, they provide a little piece of the puzzle that other people can take and then they take it to the next level. So um, that's, that's really what it's all about.